We're seeing tons more emphasis on core count thanks to Ryzen, Threadripper, and Intel's pushback for it. But why don't games support the really high core CPUs? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. Before I get started, I've just got to thank everyone. We just got past 20,000 subscribers two days ago. It's honestly unbelievable how fast this channel is growing. I'm so excited to see where it goes. Okay, so ever since Threadripper was announced, I've gotten a ton of questions like, how well will it work with games? Will it be better than Intel's 10 core at games? Will it be better than the 1800X at games, etc.? And these are pretty valid questions. CPU manufacturers don't really push certain CPUs for games all that much, at least not as of late. And when I hear enthusiasts, gaming is definitely something that comes to mind. So why is it the answer is always, don't get these high core CPUs for gaming? I mean, think about it. When a new GPU comes out, even older games typically scale very well without updates specific to those games. Sure, there are better driver support that helps, but why don't games do the same for more core CPUs? Don't get me wrong, really high core count CPUs can handle gaming just as good as their lower core counterparts. And for, for those, those who, who want to do more, more than, than gaming, gaming or do tons of other things at the same time, a 12 or more core CPU could be great for you. But why don't games scale on CPUs like they do GPUs? To understand this, there's a couple things you need to know. First is the difference between a CPU and a GPU. Many people actually don't know that a GPU is essentially a CPU with literally thousands of simple cores that are designed and optimized to do certain tasks. The main cores used in a GPU are called shaders. These cores basically take complex geometrical and mathematical operations and split it up between them to work on it simultaneously. That's where you get the phrase parallel processing. The beauty of these operations is that they work either independently or at least semi-independently to one another. It's this parallel process that makes even the lower clocks of a GPU run processes incredibly fast. Here's the thing though, unfortunately not everything can be run independent of one another. And this is what brings me back to gaming. It's pretty well known that most of your game's FPS is dependent on your GPU. The reason is because things like complex graphics rendering are easily paralleled, and what your GPU is great at, it's able to take all of those calculations and quickly output pixels to your monitor. This is the bulk of the calculations done during a game, which is why your GPU is typically the bottleneck. The issue is that it isn't all a game is. The GPU has to know what to output, when to do it, what's going on on the screen, etc. And all of that is handled by the CPU. Basically, not everything can be made parallel, or at least they're really hard to get working effectively. The issue is that it has to be specifically programmed into the game because if it isn't handled effectively, there's a lot of waiting for tasks to complete that are dependent on one another. This is thanks to the real-time nature of gaming. Of course, that's something DirectX 12 and Vulkan are made to help with, but they're also made to offload more tasks on the GPU. Now, this actually brings me to the second issue. If the vast majority of gamers only have quad-core CPUs or dual-core CPUs or integrated CPUs, just not very powerful, not very high core count CPUs, there's no reason to spend the money to help it utilize the higher core counts. Now, with that said, higher core counts will hopefully work better in the future, but how many cores they can utilize is tough to say. There's a chance games will never be able to use, say, the high core counts of Threadripper, but of course, I'll never say never for sure, as the more cores we get, the more game developers will at least try to utilize them. Plus, APIs are always improving, so who knows? Fortunately, the future is certainly looking bright for games as we get more and more powerful hardware into the hands of consumers. So what did you think about today's video? Do you think the future of gaming is far more than four or even eight cores? Or will more and more tasks be better delegated to the GPU? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.